Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Haynes. I'm an audiobook narrator. And I'm Trenton Bennett, and I am an audiobook narrator, too. We are doing this series of stuff that is on our minds uh, for the industry of narration and the art of narration. If you are narration curious, this could probably benefit you. If you are seasoned and just want some fresh ideas or just an affirmation of ideas that you've you know, um, had for a long time, this could serve you as well. So, uh, Trenton, please uh, introduce uh, to this week's topic. Sure thing, Matt. So I was doing a webinar on the basics of audiobook narration, and one of the questions that came up had to do with the fact that when you're doing an ACX project and you're working under ACX's agreement, the question was about whether or not you would then use any boilerplate agreement that you have and get the rights holder to agree to that agreement. Would you send them a contract of your own? And I currently just operate under the umbrella of ACX's terms and conditions, but I wanted to see what you do because there's a lot of different ways that this could be handled. Sure. Um, what I do is I issue a supporting agreement um, uh, privately between the, the client and myself. Um, okay. And uh, so an ACX contract is uh, very, very generalized. Basically, it means, okay, you're going to deliver the full book at this time. You're going to get this type of payment for it. And you're going to um, dissolve the contract together if need be. And you are going to make sure that the book is within um, the uh, audio quality of ACX. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. There are things that I want my authors and I, or you know, my rights holders, which on ACX are usually the authors. Um, there are things that I want us to agree to for the best process uh, for um, for my um, uh, process of narration. And those are fairly simple. The first is making sure that we're on the same page in terms of the pacing of the project. So, yes, this is the drop deadline for everything getting in, um, uh, uploaded onto ACX for the author's review. However, um, it's good for the author to know and for me to be accountable for this amount of the book will be coming by the end of Friday this week, this amount the following week, and this amount the following week. We also will agree on voices that are being used for the book. And once the author signs off on those, we say, okay, that's done, taken care of. We also agree on um, basically that when it's time to record and the first 15 minutes have been approved notes to the narrator are limited to fixing word mistakes or if there are any major production issues where it's like whoa this sounds like it's coming through a kazoo or um yeah, wait a second there was this there's this big sort of smack sound and a, a voice that didn't sound like your own that's usually my whoopsie which is like oh yeah my my editing assistant um uh, uh was giving me a note and i uh accidentally left it in there <laughs> um, exactly good little too. glitches but those those are things that definitely I, I i should be accountable for and the uh rights holder is accountable to limiting their notes to just those things um and uh another thing is the size of my name on the cover of the audiobook not the cover of the book obviously but on the audiobook that, that's an interesting that. one yeah I make a stipulation that you know my name should be no smaller than 50 percent of the name of the author on on that and uh that's you know th that's just really helpful stuff and when the um when the author slash rights holder uh makes that agreement then we are uh, ready to go and sign the agreement on acx which has the more generalized okay binding book will be delivered by this time payment will be this and yeah i mean that's basically it um so that's 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 what I do, and it's it's been working very well for the last golly, I would say seven years. Yeah, awesome. It's, it's sometimes hard to remember how long we've been doing this, but uh, but yeah. A couple of quick follow up questions for you. First is, sure. how, what do you consider their agreement? Do they just reply to your email and say, "Okay, this looks good. I agree to these terms." What I do is I do, um, I have some blanks that they fill in, their their oh. uh, name, their address, their phone number. 
Um, the address, by the way, comes in very handy if it's an author that I've worked with for the first time because I often send them a welcome gift at the end of our process. Um, but uh, there's the name, the address, the phone number, and then um, uh, a typed signature that they do. I don't, I don't use like any any fancy software for that, you know, where you, where you type it in and it looks like a you know, hand signature or anything like that. I just... Um, I just say, hey, you know, this agreement is binding if you type your name in this in this blank. Um, and then we date it. That's that's uh, that that's how we do it. Cool. Yeah. My other question was, you said something about how we get agreement on voice character mm -hmm. voices. That uh, that's that's a really fun part of the process. I um, asked the author to uh, create a spreadsheet or uh, fill in a spreadsheet, actually, that I've created for them. And it's OK. Character name, age, any background information that would be significant, and then uh, what are the um, vocal qualities? What, what does this character remind you of in terms of a celebrity or a character in TV film that would be comparable? I'm not going to be able to necessarily do a perfect impersonation, but I at least will understand what you're going for. I then make a uh, a demo of the characters' uh, voices, um, send them to the rights holder, and then they weigh in, and then uh, we've got we've got that agreed on as well. Wow, that's actually kind of a cool step in the process because I'm all for prep and I do a lot of of extra prep, but I don't do something like that. That's kind of useful to know, and and I'm going to consider that too. I think the authors get a big kick out of it, um, so it's 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 a win win. It opinion. gets them comfortable with the idea, too, because whatever's in their head can't materialize in the real world, and it's not necessarily what your voice does. So you can right. give them that impression of, within the range of my voice, this is what yes, that would sound like. Yes, exactly, cool. exactly. And, and I, yeah, it, it, it eliminates that sort of like, oh, you know, what's, what's it going to be like? What's it going to sound like? It's like, oh, okay, here's, you know, you've gotten my audition, and so now you know a little bit of what it's going to be like. You now have the voices, so you know what those are going to sound like. And then when the first 15 minutes are uploaded on ACX, you know what that sounds like. So it's a, it's a, it's a gentler um uh, sort of um, stepping into the pool. I like that. That's really clever, actually. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> I I probably stole it from somebody who was clever, and they probably stole it from somebody else. So this is uh, <laughs> that's kind of the way it works around. That's here. the way it works. Do more of what works and less of what doesn't. That's right. And who said that? <laughs> David, David H. H. Lawrence, Lawrence the seventeenth. Yep. Yes. <laughs> um. Everybody, uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Matt Haynes. And I'm Trenton Bennett. And as your narrators and your teachers of narration, I hope that our voices in your ears meet again real soon. Thanks, everybody.